Welcome back. I'm here with actor Ernie Hudson, and yes, he will be appearing in the upcoming Ghostbusters 3. You can also see him in the critically acclaimed Netflix series Grace and Frankie. Let's take a look at that. What are we doing here? Um, what do you mean? You're thirsty, I'm gonna get you a backup drink. No, I mean this. Us. What are we doing? We're having a business dinner. Wow. I thought it was a date. You thought it was a date? Of course it's a date. I cook you 11 vegetable dishes, and I'm wearing a sport coat. You're wearing a sport coat. It's got to be a date, right? It has to be a date, yes. <laughs> Ernie Hudson, thanks for being here. Well, thank you. Uh, okay, let's talk about the series. It's Netflix. Could a series like this, they talk about how it's a groundbreaking series. Right. You know why I think it's groundbreaking? Why is that? Let's look at the cast. Jane Fonda, Lily Tomlin, Martin Sheen, Sam Waterston. They're all in their 70s. Yeah, yeah. It's a whole demographic that normally doesn't get served in the regular media. And so it's nice to see that life actually uh, goes on past 60. <laughs> you know, that people actually have lives. You're the young and, guy uh, in this cast, aren't you? Yeah, I'm the young guy. Uh, even though, I mean, I'm not that far behind. So You are. Can we say how old you are? I'm 70. You're 70? I'm 70, so... I can't believe you know, it. Because I thought when they asked me to be Lily Tomlin's boyfriend, I'm like, uh, really? But then... <laughs> And I realized I'm not that much younger. Yeah, I mean, because we grew up, I mean, you're probably watching her and laughing and everything. But let's go back. I want to go back to your career, how you started. Yeah. I mean, you were, you essentially, let's talk about the, the concept East Theater. I don't think people right. know what that is. That was a Detroit, a legendary theater company. Yeah, Detroit, back in its, you know, best days when it was really one of the wealthiest cities in the country, there was a lot of theater. And the Concept East Theater was, um, it, like I said, was the oldest theater in America at the time. I don't know if they're even still there now because of what's happened to Detroit. But um, it was a great place. Uh, Woody King, uh, Ron Milner, a lot of guys who came out of that came to New York, had wonderful careers. Um, and you were, the, you were the playwright in residence, and you were what? You were just out of high school, right? I was uh, pretty much. I mean, but when I got out of high school, I got married. Yeah. I had kids. And then I decided that uh, I needed to do something with my life. <laughs> so, like maybe it was kind of you know after the fact, but I managed to uh, to get to Detroit, to get into college, to uh, discover theater. And it's African American Theater Company, right? It w yeah, that one, that was yeah. Yeah. But then, uh, but I got my equity card in Detroit. I mean, I yeah. I did a lot of theater and um, yeah. Then Yale Drama School. And then after I graduated from Wayne State, I got a scholarship to Yale. Yeah. Uh, school of Drama. Um, and, uh, and then after the first year, uh, my, my wife, who was actually uh, in the ninth grade when we got married, um, she took a GED and she got into college, um, uh, and then she got her uh, bachelor's from Wayne State, and she got her master's from the University of Michigan, and she eventually got a PhD from the University of Minnesota. Unbelievable. So okay, we so were pretty pretty driven. Okay, so I'm going to take you, you were, after Yale Drama School, you were in a play called Daddy Goodness, right? Yes, yeah. And yeah. you were seen by Gordon Parks? Well, you sort of been directly. I was in a play called uh, Daddy Goodness, and we are doing the show, and uh, I was trying to break in, no success, had a really bad experience with an agent, and uh, I was, I met a girl at a party, um, and after seeing this agent who just broke my heart and told me to go back to Detroit, it's never going to happen. You're in um, L.A. and she's the agent telling you it's agents, over. Agents are like, forget it. You're never going to work. Go back to Detroit. There's nothing for you here. Uh, there's no work for you, period. Early 70s. Uh, this was, uh, yeah, this was early 70s. Yeah. yeah. And so and Gordon Parks, tell people who, go, if these people don't know who Gordon Parks is, I mean, he was the great he photographer was, um, turned filmmaker. Yeah, for um, Life magazine. He filmmaker. He uh, a musician. Yeah. Uh, he was just a renaissance man. He was, uh, he, he did Sounder, Shaft. Um, uh, no, it wasn't Sounder. It was uh, the Learning Tree, Shaft. Um, but he, he was the filmmaker. He was he just an extraordinary man. Um, and so I went over to this girl's house and sort of cried in, you know, um, and went home. But I, the photo that I tried to give to the agent who wouldn't take my agent, yeah. I left it on her piano. And that night, I didn't know she was Gordon's daughter. And that night, Gordon came by for oh. dinner and he saw my oh. photo and <laughs> resume and he saw him went to Yale. And so, and he was doing a movie uh, called Lead Belly. And so Par uh, Paramount called me uh, in, and um, and that started. That's your LA career. That's and then my you, career, I mean, yeah. I remember you from TV. 
Little House on the Prairie, Fantasy Island, Dukes yeah. of Hazard, The White yeah. Shadow. You were a working actor I, long before you got Ghostbusters. Well, when my when the marriage ended and I couldn't go back to Yale, I took my sons and we went to L.A. because I have a brother who's living there. Mm -hmm. And it was very difficult for me to say to my sons, this is America, you can be anything you want to be, when I'm saying I can't be what I want to be. So it was important for me to demonstrate that, yeah, if you believe, if you have faith, you can do this. And so I just, I went to work. I went to work some way or other. I'm going to find a job, and I, I worked. And then uh, the rest is history. I mean, that's when I, I, didn't even, I saw you in Ghostbusters, and yeah. then when I looked up all your stuff online, I go back, and then I said, I remember seeing this guy on TV. Oh, in yeah, the yeah. No, I've, I've always worked. I've worked steady for 50 years. Now, honest. we started talking about Netflix and your show. It's a different economy out there with television. There's a lot of places to consume media now. Is it harder or easier, do you think, to be a working actor these days? I think it's harder to make a living as an actor. Uh -huh. I mean, what, um, yeah, it's like, I suppose, most businesses, um, it just doesn't pay. I mean, for young actors, I'm fine, yeah. you know, because yeah. I'm, you know, I, I got all this, this history. But yeah. for young people starting out, so much has gone offshore. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of it, for example, Vancouver, when I was up there last shooting um, uh, Once Upon a Time, there were 100 productions going. Yeah. And so if you're in Vancouver, which is a small population, you're an actor, you're going to work. You're going to do 20, 30 films in a year. You come to L.A., you can get an agent right away. Yeah. If you're in the States, you get out of college, you can't get a film unless you're in the union. You can't get in the union. So it's very difficult. And if you get a job, they just don't pay what they used to pay. Okay, well, so as usual, everything, like everything in this country, is a lot of opportunity, but it's harder than ever to make a living. Thank you so much, Ernie Hudson, for joining Great us. Talking Watch to you. the show on Netflix. Thank you so much. And look them up. Look at this long career, it's fascinating. We'll